Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we're going to be playing a Jurassic World mod for Minecraft. Here's my character right here, Dr. Clayton F. And we're gonna go ahead and start new. I have played this a little bit and I gotta be real with you guys. This is probably my favorite Jurassic World video game that we've gotten like since Jurassic World came out. I'm not even kidding. I, <laughs> I really like what they're doing with this game right here. Ah, here we go. We are now on Isla Nublar. Now, in order to play this game specifically, you're going to need to buy Minecraft for Windows 10, not uh, the Java version. I made that mistake earlier today. I bought two versions of Minecraft. But yeah, buy it for Windows 10 and then buy the $7.99 Jurassic World add-on. Once you do that, welcome to Jurassic World. And I'm not kidding when I say I really, really love this game. Look at how much detail went, in, went into this uh whole thing uh the monorail okay so this guy basically tells us that we can go ahead and go to jurassic world so let's whoa uh, okay ah there we go now we're on our little temple of doom minecart thing <laughs> and uh this looks very different obviously from the movie but everything else is pretty much it's just so much fun i can't even explain to you like how happy i was to see it because i'm not gonna lie uh, your boys never played Minecraft before. I know nothing about this game except for kids play. And I know that if my little sister actually heard me say that, she'd think I'm a boomer or something because I did not know what I was doing when I was shoveling around in the sand and knocking at stuff with a pickaxe. Anyways, here's the gates and we're about to embark on our Jurassic journey. Now, check this out, man. They have meticulously crafted like every little nook and cranny of Colin Trevorrow's theme park. And here's the hotels everywhere right here. Mosasaurus Stadium. And look at this. You can actually see it like swimming in the water right here with the uh, trainer right there. By the way, this would look a little terrifying if you, cause you know, if you go to any Jurassic Park, uh, it doesn't usually end well for people. So to actually be elevated over a big lagoon with a giant aquatic reptile that's like, several feet long that, that sounds a little unsafe but whatever all right and now we're supposed to get off and uh well look at that look at that map that's so accurate to the to the actual movie only not at all <laughs> welcome to jurassic world the innovation center is straight ahead look for the tall brown pyramid made out of glass now the opening parts of this game are pretty much just a tutorial but you can do all kinds of stuff like uh go to the gentle giants petting zoo. I don't know why you would unless you're a child, but hey, whatever. I'm not going to judge. And really, you're just supposed to follow the sparkles on the ground that lead you to various uh, locations. So in order to really play the game, you're going to have to go to the Innovation Center. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Okay, here we go. All right. And it looks pretty much identical to the movie. In my mind, I'm comparing this a lot with Jurassic Explorer, which was pretty much the best Jurassic World fan game you could possibly ask for. But this Minecraft version has done a really good job emulating that as well. They feel pretty similar in my opinion. All right, and after you're done following your little sparkles, you hit this lever and go see Dr. Wu. And look how happy he is right here. Let's see what he's got to say. Here at the lab, we create dinosaurs from DNA, the basic building blocks of life. Return to me after you speak to Claire and Mr. Mizrani, and I will tell you about my creations. Okay, so let's get some DNA recipes from him. Ooh, and I'm holding that in my hand now, okay. Uh, so we're gonna go this way. Now I'm holding a hot dog, okay, holding a hot dog. Whoa, that, that was very quick. Oh, here, oh my God. Ha they've even had the Jurassic, <laughs> look at the, they've even made the mistake that Fallen Kingdom did with like the lagoon going out into the ocean. Oh my God, oh well. <laughs> Hi Claire, how are you doing? The park is currently closed, so we aren't earning revenue, but we won't suffer any disasters either. We need to make more dinosaurs and finish the exhibits before the park can open. Go to the roof and talk to Mr. Mizrani about getting more DNA. We've also got Vivian and Lowry here. Lowry, how are you doing, buddy? Hi, I'm Lowry. Claire's always talking about making flashier and more dangerous hybrids to increase the hype of the park. I prefer the historical dinosaurs, and I'm not the only one. Oh, you hipster, you you only like things because they're old. I hope you get eaten in Dominion. Okay, hi, Vivian. All right, we're gonna go this away. Hi, Hamada, you're gonna get stepped on by an Indominus in a little while. Helipad. Ooh, 
Now this this right here is extremely cool. Like you can look out over the whole park. And I do love, to this day, I love the fact that Jurassic World built the T-Rex Kingdom to be like Jurassic Park San Diego from the Lost World. They even got the Redwoods in there that were on Sorna. So I just, I, I love that. Uh, I love everything about it, man. Mr. Miss Ronnie, how are you enjoying my park? Do the dinosaurs seem happy? Travel to the fossil dig in amber mines to discover more dinosaur samples for the park. I can even fly you there. I just got my license. Yeah, you're not very good, but whatever. When you are ready to create dinosaurs, return to Dr. Wu in the lab. Okay, so we're gonna take a radio from him. We're gonna take the flight manual. We're gonna take, uh... Actually, we'll go to the amber mines first. Whoa, we got here pretty quick. Now, when I was playing this earlier, I didn't really see a lot of other people online playing this little part of the game. Um, but I could, why am I holding a hot dog? Let's get, let's do the, okay, Jurassic Park Radio, there we go. All right, so, uh, Foreman, what can you tell me, Mr. Foreman? The amber found in this mine provided the first genetic samples used in dinosaur cloning. Dig through cracked earth with the pickaxe to get a sample. Use the extraction tool to collect it. Every time you get a sample, you will be shown you, how many remain? Okay, so get the pickaxe from him and then get the extraction tool. Disaster dog? Is that what the hot dogs are called? Okay, whatever. So we're gonna scroll over to our pickaxe. So we've got our pickaxe right here, right? And we can get this crumbly looking rock. Now, I know Clayton's never played Minecraft before. He's a bit of a boomer when it comes to these kitty games here with the Super Nintendo graphics. But hey, I grew up with a Sega Genesis, so this is kind of blasphemy. Oh, there's our amber. So we're gonna use the extraction tool right here and start digging at it. And oh, comp signate the sample added to the lab. We're gonna make so much money, homie. All right, and you're gonna select go back to Isla Nublar and after you do, oh, you know what? No, we're not done just yet. We're gonna go check out the fossil dig. And this looks uh, very much like the original Jurassic Park movie if you didn't know already. So. Even if you go right here, that's like Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler's little trailer that uh, John Hammond kind of just decided to break in and, and steal their alcohol, whatever. There's a lot of weird stuff in that movie when you start to think about it. Anyways, we're gonna talk to a uh, world-renowned scientist known as Paleontologist. Now he tells us fossils at this site have provided some of the best genetic material to the lab. Use the shovel to dig through the sand and look for new fossils. Use the extraction tool on a fossil to collect a sample. When you get a sample, you will be shown how many remain. So give me the shovel. All right. So I now have a shovel. With this shovel, I can shovel through sand and basically find dinosaur bones that we can ground up into genetic material, which interestingly was a big part of the book. I don't think a lot of people know this, or they should know this, but maybe they, oh, oh, we found something already. Hold that thought. Extraction tool away, and what is it? It's a Stygy Moloch. So one of the things that I don't think a lot of people really understand or paid attention to in Jurassic Park is that technically, Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler were working for John Hammond. I mean, he tells them he's already been funding their dig site. They know who he is when he breaks into their trailer. But in the book, it's pretty clear that John Hammond is actually using their expertise on dinosaurs so that he can pretty much get the information he needs on dinosaurs in order to raise them. Ooh, checkpoint reached. I don't know what I did, but it must've been pretty good. Uh, I can't do anything here. Uh, oh. I think there's some stuff to dig for right here. But yeah, anyways, when you really think about it, Alan Grant was kind of employed by Engine, and he was going to give them $150,000 just so they would say nice things to the park. In other words, make Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler shills. Um, they didn't do it, though, obviously, after they almost died. So, hey, that's... that's oh, 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 we found something. We found something. Okay, so... Let's take our extraction tool, and what you're gonna do is start hacking away with that. What did we find? Carnotaurus sample, awesome. Okay, and now that we've done all that, we're gonna go ahead and get out of the fossil mine. Looks like it's actually turning dark outside. Hope it's not too dark. Sometimes these games can uh, make my computer go a little black. It's hard to see. Take me back to Isla Nublar. Okay, now we are back in glorious Jurassic World. Open the door, and we're gonna go down to Floor Lab. 
Once here, this is actually one of my favorite parts of this whole game. There's that smiling Dr. Wu. What do you got for me, buddy? My work creating dinosaurs from DNA fragments spans two decades. It starts with a sample, which can be frozen in amber or fossils. At station one, you will learn where we store the samples. If you find other samples in the world, use this extraction tool to collect them. Now, I've already got the extraction tool, so we can go ahead and get out of there. Um, I do find it... <laughs> Very funny that they're called stations, like a middle school lab class, station one, station two, station three. Uh, where's the little thing where I clean out my eyes if I get like chemicals in them? Ah! So station one, when you collect one sample, we can clone an infinite amount and fill one of these cold storage units. When you get more samples, more units will appear on the wall behind me. To get started, take several samples from the storage unit labeled Gallimimus. Then go to station two to extract the DNA. See, they basically give us Gallimimus immediately. So here's the Gallimimus stuff. Open it up and we're going to, oh, I did that wrong. You just click on it and drop it. Now I've got some Gallimimus stuff. So we're gonna go over to station two. Vials are used to extract DNA from samples. Put the sample in the top of the extractor. The red, blue, okay, and red, blue, or green vials in the bottom. When the process is complete, it will turn the vials into DNA. You'll need three red, two blue, and one green DNA for station three. So he's gonna give us three red vials, two blue vials, and one green vial. Then we're gonna go over to this, which is the weird biopsy thing. We're gonna put our red vials here. And then we're gonna put our Gallimimus stuff right here. And as you can see, it's working along and doing some stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The reason I love this game so much is because it offers up something very differently than Jurassic World Evolution, which is just looking like over the top of your park as you build it. This actually makes you a person on the ground working at Jurassic World. And as you can see, look, we've already got our DNA right here and it's just way more fulfilling this way. And um, I'm also gonna be honest with you, this little implementation of, I know this isn't real science and it's not even real science in the movie, but to, to a degree, I feel like this little bit of education as far as like the DNA producing dinosaurs and stuff like that, going to fossil mines and getting amber, that's a STEM thing that I think kids could really learn a lot from, and it could make Jurassic Park more than just, you know, a, a scary movie franchise. So I don't, I'm, I'm really digging what they've done here. So now we're going to go over to Station 3. Cloning an embryo generally requires three red, two blue, and one green to be placed in the sequencer in any order. Dr. Wu is experimenting with other combinations as well. When you have your embryo, visit Station 4. So after you do that, you're gonna right click or whatever on this right here. Ah, and you're gonna bring up all this stuff. So we've got our three red. Remember we needed two blue and then we needed one green. Oh, herbivore DNA. And there's our little Gallimimus embryo. God, I love how like, <laughs> this is such a weird 16 bit world or eight bit world or whatever, but it still looks so cool. Again, I'm a Minecraft noob, so keep that in mind. The last step is to place your embryo in an ostrich egg. Put the embryo into the incubator and you'll get a spawn egg for your baby dinosaur. At stage five, you can learn how to place and transport your dinosaur. So we've got the embryo. Uh, we do this, put the embryo in the ostrich egg and wait for it to, uh, I don't really know, fertilize maybe or take to the egg. I don't, I don't get how this works, but whatever. There, we've got our Gallimimus egg. So we take it out, and then we go over to Station 5, ACU. We are the ACU, a team that can capture dinosaurs. When you want to move a dinosaur to a different part of the park, use the crossbow and darts to put it to sleep. Then use the crate on the ground to capture it. You can use the dinosaur spawn egg in the room behind me. Capture it in the crate, then visit Station 6. So give me the crossbow and give me the darts. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this is the one part of the game that I'm a little fuzzy on exactly how to do. So it says, you can use the dinosaur spawn egg in the room behind me. How do I use it? That's that's one thing that I'm uh, a little fuzzy on. What's station six again? Let's check it out. Once you place a new dinosaur, we fill this room with eggs of that type. 
Eggs can be placed in the hatchery in the lab or directly into the park. Your park's hype goes up for each type of dinosaur contains. Release your dinosaur into the Gallimimus Valley. Have fun. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and I'm just gonna open this up. And we've got like this little thing right here. I think this is where our eggs are supposed to go. So open up your inventory, take the egg out. And I guess, I don't know, uh, put it here. I actually really don't know what to do right here. So while all this stuff is happening, I'm gonna go ahead and get what I need to make a Stygy Moloch. Now, the Stygy Moloch is interesting because I guess it's going to go in the exact same location as it went last time, which is, I guess, the area that the Gallimimus is gonna go in. But anyways, what you do from here is just repeat all the steps that I just showed you. So you get your three uh, you get your three red vials from that scientist, and you get your Stygy Moloch DNA, and he just kind of makes it in a pretty quick order. Then you swap them out for the two blue and the green, and then you go over to the, all the other steps I went over earlier, and you should be able to make a baby dinosaur. And of course, you know we're gonna make a Carnotaurus. There's no reason making a Jurassic World if you're not gonna create a very evil and deadly dinosaur that could kill every, all of its inhabitants. So, uh, yeah, well, we're gonna do that too. Oh, we've got a new dinosaur. So, new eggs, I guess, are added to the lab, whatever. Now, I not only did the Gallimimus, oh, looks like Jurassic World is also ready to, oh, we've got a Stygy Moloch too. Um, so, it looks like what we're supposed to do now is go to the control room, talk to Claire, and she's gonna open up the park. Now, uh, how do we get there? This, this way, elevator, control room, and here we go. So, hi Claire, uh, we've gotta go down here, click the magic button, the park is open. Why do I have a wrench? <laughs> now I do have my handy dandy crossbow here, just, to, just in case, you know, things get out of control. But yeah, we're gonna go down to the garage from here, and we're gonna get in our super cool Jurassic World uh, vehicle thing. Okay, so Sector 3 is Gallimimus Valley in the ACU headquarters. Sector 1 is the Quick Build Utility Dock. Sector 2 is the Maintenance Weather Station. Disaster! A violent storm is approaching. Okay, that's actually bad. Head to Sector 2 and use the Weather Station to help track its path. It is located on the western edge of the island directly west of the lagoon. Sector 2. I guess we should go there first then, shouldn't we? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cock my gun forward in case I have to shoot any crazy dinosaurs while I'm on the way there. Sector 2 security. I'm gonna actually gonna get out of this. Um, I don't want to shoot the door. <laughs> Alright buddy, what's going on? Park security can track storms and arrest saboteurs in Sector 2. Let's track that storm. Disaster solved. Tracking is slow. Showing the storm is subsiding. Okay. Uh, that was it. Oh, it's kind of easy. Anyways, we're gonna get back on our bike, turn around, and don't get lost here, by the way, because I actually did on the first time that I was playing this game. I had no idea where I was going. I wound up near Owen's Velociraptor paddock, and I was, you can't exactly ask him for directions, so <laughs> it, it was a little, uh, it was a little nerve-wracking. All right, and we've got our gun ready. Oh, can I hit it with a wrench? Oh, I actually can. Okay. I have not been here before yet. Oh, check it out. We've got some Gallimimuses. So everything seems to be going pretty cool here. I love these galleys, by the way. They look so cool. Hey, buddy. Ah, he's going to sleep. <laughs> now, I don't think I heard him, but whatever. I just wanted to test that out and see if it worked. So, this is the Gallimimus Valley. This is what everyone is coming to Jurassic World to see. Now, I don't know where that Stygy Moloch went that I made. Does he go to, like, a different area or something? I don't know. Anyways, while we're out here, we might as well look at it from a different perspective and just check the whole place out. Now, there's galleys all over the place. There should be sauropods and other stuff in here, too, but until we make them, I guess they're not going to be available. Um, one thing that I really like about this game, and I already said it before, is I know this is pixelated, I know it's Minecraft. Look, I had not even played Minecraft before today, my dudes. But it's still, it's just got much more of an interesting feel, in my opinion, than what we had going on with Jurassic World Evolution. And, uh, it's no disrespect to Jurassic World Evolution. 
It's just, in my opinion, uh, this feels kind of better. All right, so here's their Gallimimus Valley Guide. What's going on, man? Drive alongside herds of galleys close enough to touch. If you need a new truck, I'll be happy to help you out. Well, we don't want to get on the tr- Oh, saboteurs in Sector 3. Saboteurs have been spotted on the east dock on the north- oh, I didn't have enough time to read that. Okay, so we got to get out of here and go stop those saboteurs, I guess. We are having a pretty busy day at Jurassic World already. How do I get out of here? Okay, here we go. Here's the access to the garage. So... Yeah, this way. We gotta go stop those saboteurs. They were in Sector 3, right? So, Sector... No, they were in... Oh, they said they were at the East Dock, actually. I'm gonna go to Sector 2. I think that's where they want us to go. Let me go ahead and get my crossbow ready. I don't think it matters to Universal if we kill Biosyn soldiers. <laughs> What's going on, man? Park security can track storms. Stop those saboteurs! Sector 2 security team is already dealing with the disaster. Good, good. All right, so I guess I guess there was no big deal then. We're gonna drive back this way and actually go out to the lab and see what we can uh, do with the Carnotaurus. I don't know where the Stygy Moloch has gone, but hopefully, even with what I'm showing you guys today, you'll have learned enough to really just play the game for yourself and get an idea on what exactly you can and can't do. Let's go ahead and go to the lab, and I should have a... Carnotaurus actually waiting me in an a- Oh my god, there's a Gallimimus! And Lex! Lex, what are you doing? It's not a Metasaurus. Why is he in here? Um, I'll, I'll take care of this. Uh... <laughs> what now? Like, what happens after that? Right click. He's sleeping. Hey, buddy. No, no, no. Turn back around. Yeah, you got, you got work to do, buddy. Transport crate. Uh, I got a... is that a... is that a stun stick? Zap... uh, well, let me use it. Oh! Knocked him back out. Okay. I, I actually don't know what to do right there, so sorry. Oh my god, asset out of containment. A wild Carnotaurus has appeared in the valley to the east of the aviary. Okay, we've got some work to do now, boys. Okay, a wild Carnotaurus is by the aviary. How do we get to the aviary? ACU Headquarters, Quick Build Utility Dock, Maintenance and Weather Station. None of those is the aviary. All right, so I'm gonna walk into the ACU Armorer guy and talk to him. If you need to confront Tranquilizer Transport Dinosaur, be sure to have this equipment. I've got all that equipment. Oh, I don't have armor. Give me the armor, okay. Now you'd think they'd give me a map or something to actually, you know, uh, oh. I guess I should go ahead and equip this, <laughs> my pants. My ACU stuff and my special helmet. Okay. Okay, so... Disaster. Asset out of containment again. A wild Spinosaurus has appeared near the river to the east of the lagoon. Okay, so already... I don't know how dinosaurs are breaking out on our park, but uh, they most definitely are. Oh, this is how we do the map. Okay. So we're gonna walk out of here and try to go to the lagoon where a Carnotaurus and a Spinosaurus are. We're gonna use the capture crates and, uh, God help us. All right, we are now in the actual park itself. It's at night too, so, uh, it, I, it is kind of spooky in a weird pixelated way. Oh my God, there it is. Spinosaurus, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, and I got him. All right, ah, off road, buddy. Okay, so he's asleep. Now, we're supposed to use a capture crate and, uh, so let me go ahead and get the... I'm gonna capture this dinosaur. Oh, is that is that how you do it? Oh, oh my god, he's waking up. Oh, oh god. Okay, this is bad. Uh... No, 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 no. No, oh god! Oh, I just did shoot him in time. How am I supposed to capture him? Disaster solved. Spinosaurus contained in Sector 1. Okay, we got rid of the Spinosaurus prop. Why is there a Spinosaurus here? Is my theory about Paddock 10, like, legitimate? <laughs> so now we've got to go towards the aviary and make sure that we stop this Carnotaurus from doing whatever it's doing. Um, you know... Oh, oh, what do we got here? What do we got here? Okay, so that, that tells me nothing. Whatever. I'm assuming if I just go around the island, I'll eventually hit the aviary. I know that sounds a little crazy, but hey, it's what we're going to try to accomplish here. 
all in all, I am quite impressed with this because, oh, we've got another disaster power outage in sector three. She, oh, that's the Raptor training paddock. Okay, that's that's really bad. Uh, and that's on the eastern side of the island, though, so that's where we are. We should be able to actually find that pretty easily. I did run into Owen and Barry last time I played the game. By the way, the, the island never looked like that in that image. This is some trespasser logic. Ah! Oh, God. Um, the raptors are actually... Can we close this? Ooh, that was close. But he tried to get out, didn't he? <laughs> so, power is out, but... Owen, shouldn't you be doing something about it here, buddy? Let's go up here and see if they need any help. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend. One of my favorite characters, actually, by the way. Owen Grady. Some dinosaurs can be trained. They're not pets. It's a relationship based on mutual respect. You must start with a baby dinosaur and feed it by hand until it trusts you. When the dinosaur grows up, you can use the clicker on it and it will learn to communicate with you. Okay, give me the clicker, give me the commands, and give me the food. What is the food, like a hot dog or something? Uh, okay, and I got whatever that was. So it is at night and we are, oh, this is so cool by the way, this is just like the movie. Oh my God, is that a hole? That is not a hole. Are the raptors out? Not that one. Blue's not, I think that's a hole. Uh, okay, can I jump over that? Maybe it's not a hole. Okay, I was freaking out there for a second. I was like, uh, the raptors are like one of the last things that you ever want to get out. God, look at the detail too. This is where they go. Oh, dude, this is so cool. Oh, damaged vehicle in sector three. Repair the damaged truck in the Gallimimus Valley. We still haven't taken care of that car in a Taurus either. What's this red button do? Oh, <laughs> it sends out a pig for them to eat. Hey, they didn't want to eat him? Uh, you lived, pig. Oh, never mind. He's dead. All right, Owen, it's been real cool. Hey, Barry, I didn't say hi to you yet, but uh, I got to go save Jurassic Park. I'm sure we'll find the aviary eventually. I'm pretty sure I came across it last time. But, uh, I don't really remember where. Oh, quick build. I guess we can... Oh, now they did say that hot air balloons would actually mark where stuff's going wrong. So we got a hot air balloon right there and right here. So, oh, here we go. We are towards the aviary. So I can't remember if this is where the Carnotaurus was or if this is where something else that's bad that was happening. Gosh, we actually got a lot of, uh... <laughs> we got a lot of stuff going on here, don't we? Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today. This is just showing you the bare, basic, and minimum stuff that you need to know for how to play Jurassic World on Minecraft. I am being dead serious when I say that I really love this game. I did not expect to. You know, when you think of Minecraft, you just think of something for kids, which is definitely what this is. But I'm not going to lie, it feels more Jurassic than some of the AAA Jurassic games we've gotten in the last few years. I don't know exactly what they're going to do with this in the future or how the game eventually proceeds, but I'm having a ton of fun with it. If you had fun, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below and let me know if you'd like to see more episodes of this in the future. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you guys had fun watching this video. And yeah, see you all next time. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.